afternoon. All right, let's get started. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, so before we start the new content, I want to uh, spend a minute talk about the quiz. Uh, there are some questions about quiz. So I just pull up one, uh, one of the problem here. And you can see uh, this is quiz one. Right? So if you have a force that apply on this bar, on the top surface, but with an angle. Now, when you apply this force, right, you're going to have basically two components. One is perpendicular to the surface, one is parallel to the surface, right? So therefore, what kind of stress are you going to have in this bar? You have both shear stress and normal stress. That's why you have this uh, answer D, right? Okay, so uh, then the next one, let's look at quickly here. Uh, it's asking about allowable stress. Okay, so that's the basic concept of safety factor and allowable stress, right? So if you know the sigma y, the yield stress is 240, right? You want the safety factor of four. So therefore, when you design the structure, how high the stress can go? It's basically sigma y divided by n, by the safety factor. So you, therefore, you can go up to only 60. Right. So basically, this gives you a flavor what kind of question we're going to ask in the quizzes. So more uh, concept-based uh, question, something very simple, uh, not complicated uh, computation there. Right. Uh, actually, we're going to have another quiz, uh, quiz number two that's coming up today. I'll put a due date uh, Monday, again, Monday noon. So you need to do it 11 o'clock, before the uh, 11 o'clock. Otherwise, if you start at 12 o'clock, you won't finish it. Right, so uh, the due date will be Monday noon. All right, so it's again will be simple concept questions. Okay, so here is a quick quiz here, kind of uh, uh, give you a hint what's going to come up. Okay, let's say if I have line load. Okay, uh, 20 newton here. I pull this bar. It's going to stretch, right? Elongate say by one mi uh, two millimeter. Okay, so this elongate by two millimeter. Now, what if I stretch two rubber bands? Same force. How much are you going to stretch? It will be half of it, right? Because you double the area, so that the elongation will be half, right? Okay, now what if I stretch two rubber bands but in serial connection? Okay, same force. How much uh, displacement? How much elongation I'm going to get? Four. Going to double it. Okay, now what if I have this situation? Okay, one, one rubber band, but I have another rubber band. Just connect to it. So I stretch this one. How much am I going to get? Uh, OK, that's your homework. OK, try this and then do the quiz. All right, so this rubber band, see here, this one is what? Four times, actually, twice of this one, right? So four rubber band here, this is two. This is the basic one. So this is double. But this is half the length. So you figure out what the answer should be. All right? Okay, if you have questions, we can talk about it the next time. All right, so for today, uh, let's continue with the indeterminate problem. This is the most challenging part or most fun part of this class. All right, so for indeterminate problem, I think now everyone should know how to identify indeterminate problems. Right? If I give you a situation, you can, based on equation of equilibrium, judge whether it's determinate or indeterminate. This is very important because this changed the way how you're going to solve it. And the, the quiz actually related to this. Give you a couple of problems. Okay, judge determinant or indeterminate. Right? So we'll leave that to the quiz and then we can discuss later. Now, if you identify an indeterminate problem, what's the way to solve it? The fed outcome, right? So that's the way oh, we're going to solve it. Okay, so today what we're going to do is go over more examples. I think you all like examples, right? So we'll go over uh, one more example. Actually, let me start with a, a little bit different one, a little bit easier than this one. Okay, so I will start here. Um, let's see if I can add a page to it. Okay, let's see, insert. A page, page break. 
page break. Okay, so I have a page break here. Okay, now, so what I have is this association. Let's say I have this ceiling here. Okay, I have the ceiling here. Uh, I don't know which one control this. Always come up with a shape. Second, let me see what, what's going on here. Okay, fix it. Okay, now let's say this is the ceiling. Right. Now I have three cables here. Right. I'm hanging one bar here, rigid. Okay, so let's say make it a little bit challenging. So I have one. This one, I know the cross-sectional area is A, okay? But this one is twice the A. This one is twice the A. All right, so I apply load P here. So there are three bars hanging in this beam, right? And there is a load I apply there, okay? So when you apply load, what's going to happen? You're going to pull the same beam down a little bit, right? You're going to move down. So the question is, how much is this point going to move down? Of course, we know the length, that's all called edge, the length of this all three bars. And we know the cross-sectional area. And we know the material. They make it easier, all the same material. Right? We know the load P. Right? Uh, just randomly give a number, means it's known. Right? So the question is, when I pull on, how much is going to uh, deform? Of course, I can also ask you, what's the stress in the three bars, right? Then give you a safety factor. Is it safe or not? So that can be other part of the question. Okay, so the very basic starting question is, what's the elongation of, this, of the bars or the movement of this beam? Okay, how can we solve this one? Is this determinate or indeterminate? Well, we're not sure, right? So now, if we're not sure, let's make a cut, free body diagram, then you write the equation of equilibrium. Say how many unknowns, how many equations you can get. And then you can say, oh, this is determinant or indeterminate. All right, so first step, free body diagram. Okay, let me write here, free body diagram. So this one is a determinant or indeterminate. You need this one. So you have to do this anyway, all right? All right, so free body diagram. Now, which part you select the free body? You select the bar, right? So this is the bar. I will just call it, actually, we can call it a beam or bar, all right? Okay, so this is rigid. Make sure this, this is rigid. We do not talk about uh, deformation here. All right, so I select this bar. Now I label all the load, so I only have one load P here. Now if I cut here, let's say make a cut here, 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 then I'm going to have three directions. So you're going to have N1 here, right? This will be N2 here. What about this one? This, you can call it N3, right? Since this is our first problem, let's say we say N3. I can prove it will be equal to N1 in a second. Okay, so let's do it N3. We'll show it it's actually equal to N1. Right. So this is uh, all the reactions you get from three cables. Or actually, this is the internal force inside the three cables, right? That's what you need when you try to calculate the elongation of three cables. So we get that uh, showed up here. So that's a free body diagram. That's the F part. Now, equation of equilibrium. What's the equation of equilibrium? You can write about this object. <laughs> Sum of force equals zero. So sigma Fy equals zero. All right? So now continue writing. That means Ny. Okay, so N1 plus N2 plus N3 
minus p equals zero, right? Or I can say equals p. Either way, it's correct equation. Right? Okay, that's sigma f y equals zero. Sigma f x equals zero. It's zero equals zero. Automatically satisfied. All right. Now the second equation we write sigma moment equals zero. Okay, moment to which point? Can be any point, but which point are you going to select? Select A. Where is A? The middle or the left? You can select either one. Okay, let's let's do two actually. We can do this point A. Let's say this point B. This point C. Let's say sigma m to A equals zero. Okay, what do you get? Two point A. So you're going to have N2 times this distance. Let's say we use the letter B as we used previously, right? So N2 times B, then minus P times B, other direction. Then plus N3 times 2B equals zero. Okay, so this gives us another relation between N2 and N3. All right. So we have two equations. How many unknowns do we have? Three. N1, N2, N3. Right? So it's indeterminate. You say, maybe I can write another equation. I can write sigma m to point C equals zero. Can I write this way? Yes, I can write this one instead of the previous one. So, okay, translate this one. So you're going to have N1 times B, the point clockwise. And then you're going to have N3 times B, counterclockwise, at the gas equals zero. All right? So we have now write down three equations. But how many of these equations are independent? Three equations. Are they in independent? No, they're not. Because we know for equilibrium, 3D, 2D, you only have three equations. Sigma fx equals zero, sigma fy equals zero, and the one moment equation equals zero. Right? So therefore, you don't have this fourth one there. So they're not independent. So therefore, of this one and this one, you can only pick one. Use one, they'll be independent. Okay. Actually, which one is uh, be better? The bottom one is better. Because that tells you immediately n1 equals n3. Right? So this gave me n1 equals n3. So this will equal to n1. Okay. Now, if I use this equation, so if I use this one, I, I reduce my variable to 2 now. But now, how many equations left? There are only this one equation left. So you have one equation, two unknowns. Or you can say two equations, three unknowns. The same thing. It's indeterminate. So now we know for sure it's indeterminate. Okay. So here is a way you can quickly judge whether you have determinate, indeterminate power. You can look at how many things are changing, powers, you know, how many internal force reaction there. And then you see how many equations. We know we always have only two equations. So once you count three unknowns, two equations, so it's indeterminate. Right? So the way you judge it's determinant or indeterminate is basically say how many unknowns, how many equations. All right? Another similar situation. Let's say if I have a bar like this, okay, this is a ceiling. Now I have several one here, and then holding a bar, applying load here. Determinant or indeterminant? Indeterminant. Without solving, you know it's indeterminate. Right? So you can quickly judge it's determinant or indeterminate. All right, now, yes? Okay. All right, so this two, let me put, give a number. So two and the three, they are the same. They are not independent, right? So you can pick one of this. So if I pick one, let's say I pick three. So I use a relation of equation three, give me n1 equals n3. Right. Now, if I look back to equation one here, this is equation one. Right. So I reduce to two unknowns. This is the only independent equation left you can use. 
That's why I say you, you have only one equation now. So without the movement equation, you have only one equation. Because okay. sometimes you write down all the three equations. Or sometimes we can jump. Oh, this is a symmetric problem, right? Left and right, A and C, they're all symmetric. So they should be equal. Right? So I can judge N1 equals N3 without writing down the movement equation. And then I put it here, so this will be, actually will become N1. Now I have only one equation. Two is the same as three. So equation two is the same as equation three. If you use equation two, you cannot use equation three. Because from two and one, you can add them, combination, get it, you're right, you'll find out it's actually the same as N3. So the third equation you can derive from the first two equations, that's what I'm saying. Mathematically, you can try, you will get that. All right. Okay, any other questions? No. All right, so now we know this is indeterminate, and we already did the two steps, right? The free body diagram, the fat dot com, right? The free body diagram already done. Equation of equilibrium we already write down. So what do we should do next? The definition, right? So we need to write down the definition equations. Okay, so for this problem, which one deforms? All three bars deform, right? So you have deformation equation, so the D. So this is the E part, and now we write the deformation part. Okay, so for bar one, you have delta y equals to n1 h e1 a1, right? Actually, it's all the same. No, this one is not the same. It's actually 2a, right? a1 is 2a. Right, so somehow my screen is not big enough to show everything. I can actually shrink it a little bit. Is it big enough for you all to see? All right, so we can try it this way. Okay, so we see here, all right, for bar one, the one on the left, you have this equation, delta one equals N one edge. And then for bar two, the one in the middle, you're going to have delta two equals to N two H E A. Okay, what about bar three? It's the same as the first one, so you don't have to write it at all, actually. It's the same. Okay, now, that's all the definition you write, right? Okay, now, next one, the common part, the compatibility. Compatibility means how the deformations are matching each other, are compatible to each other, or, right, or agree to each other. So the deformation you have now is the one, delta one, and delta two, right? So when you pull this rigid beam down, how the deformation, when it's generated, Delta one and the delta two are related. Okay, how would they deform? Let me change the color of thing here. Okay, if I pull it, so initially it's here, the beam is here. Now let's say I pull it here. How much deformation you get? Where is the delta one? It's this part. This is the delta one, right? Where is delta three? Uh, delta two. It's here, right? If I pull this bar down by this distance, then delta one is this much, delta two is this much. What's the relation? It must be equal, right? So delta one must be equal to delta two. That's the key equation. That's the compatibility equation. Yeah. Okay. Here's a question. I have planned the force in the middle, right? So when I pull it down, should the middle point move in more than the other points? Why not? Because you have a rigid beam, right? So if I, okay, so here, this is a rigid. I have three rubber bands here, right? So when I pull this down, either the rubber band here or here or here, right? When you pull down, they must move the same distance. Otherwise, this thing will tilt, but this won't. Why they won't tilt? Because on the left, you have delta one. 
On the right, you have the same delta 1. So it won't kill. It's symmetric. All right. The reason you don't have a different delta 1, delta 2 is because this bar you are moving, it's a rigid beam. You're moving down a rigid beam. So remember this condition, it's a rigid beam. If it's not rigid, then this is not true. So in chapter 4, chapter 5, we're going to talk about beam deformation. Then you have a beam that can be curved, and that will be a different story. We'll talk about that later. But for now, we say, always oh, say, this is a rigid beam, so it should be the same. All right? Okay, that's a question. Any other questions? Because by now, we have the F, the free body diagram, equation of equilibrium, and the deformation, and then compatibility. So we finish all the equations. Now you can combine all these equations and solve for the delta. Okay, what's the delta? I ask you delta. What's the delta? Is delta equal to this too? Yes. yes, because you move it down how much? This bar must stretch this much, and this bar must stretch the same amount. So once you find the delta 1, delta 2, it's actually you find out the delta. Okay, next will be easy, just mathematical equations, right? This linear group of four linear equations, you combine them, eliminate the one you don't need, and find out the one I'm asking you. So what exactly is this question asking? I'm asking you, what's the delta? So the question here was delta equals to what? How much are you going to move it down? The deformation. I ask you, what's the deformation of this system? But to find out that, because this is indeterminate problem, so you have to have this all the group together to find the answer. It's not like before. When you have a non-uniform bar, right? it's just one way straight. You have all this unknown, you calculate, you get the answer. Very straightforward. Now you have to write all the equations, combine together, and combine them to solve it and get your answer. That's the only part. Yeah. Everyone got the question. So he's asking, now because you're stretching three bars, right? So the one bar you have 2A. Actually, two bars you have 2A. Then one bar in the middle is 1A. Is this equivalent to you pulling a, like a group of cables that are 5A together? How much you can stretch it? Yeah, so I already trusted your question. So is this equivalent to you stretch 5A of a cable, right, a cable 5A? Yes, actually the answer is yes. Yeah, all right. The only difference is now, okay, if you look at the stress, and the, they can be different because now they are divided. So the one you have 2A, the one you have uh, 1A, because all the elongation, they're the same. Right? So you can have things maybe different. Uh, I think you can prove, actually, it will be the same as you stretch five cables. So you can do that as a after-class home, homework. Uh, you can prove that. It's equivalent to you stretch five cables. So you can actually do that way. Right? So that's actually maybe a, a way you can avoid all this approach, you can find your answer uh, a little bit easier. Right. Okay, but our emphasis here is solve the inde uh, indeterminate problems. Here. Okay. All right, other questions? Okay, in the textbook, there is another uh, example. It's similar to this. Okay, so you have basically a cube. And then inside you have a rigid, a mandrel inside. So this is a tube. Like a two-layer structure. Okay. 
you have a tube, and then inside there is a bar. So bar and the tube, they combine together. And then you stretch this thing. It's like you stretch a cable, right? If you stretch this cable here, right, there are outside the plastic wrap, and then inside there are metal bar inside. Now if you stretch it, you have to stretch inside and outside, all everything together. And then the question will be how much load will be shared by each layer, and then how much deformation you're going to get. It's actually similar to this one. So this, since this is uh, in the textbook, so you can just read it. It's very similar to what we just saw. Uh, so I will skip that. All right. It's basically give you uh, the homework assignment. You read it, or home reading assignment. Okay. And rather, I would use the time one go over a different example. That is this one. Okay. So the situation is, now I have three cables. I put them combined at the end. So the one point, uh, this, so load P here. So this point, let's call it point uh, A. Right? So you have B, point B, point C, point D. Okay. So there's three cables there. We know all the lengths, all the cross-sectional area. Make it easier. They're all the same. So you have A here, A here, A here. Right? And the material is the same, same E. Material is uh, modulus. It's all known here. All right. So now I'm applying load P at this point. The question, similar. How much is this point going to move? What's the distance delta here? All right. So first question, is this determinant or indeterminant? Before we write the equation of equilibrium, make a judge, judgment call. Well, is it de dependent or, I mean, determinant or indeterminant? It's indeterminant. Why is it indeterminant? For this one, how many equations you can write? Equation of equilibrium? Two. 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 Sigma fx equals zero. Sigma fy equals zero. Right? That's only two. Because that's all, everything at point A. It's one point equilibrium. So there's no movement in the equation. Okay, so two equations. Now, how many unknowns? Three. So you have N1 in A in uh, AB part. So that's N1, all right? So let's actually we can just write it here. So you're going to have N1 here. You're going to have N2 here, and then you're going to have N3 here. All right. So make it a, a bit easier. Let me erase this. Let A here, so let's give you some space here, all right? Okay, so we have three unknowns and the two equations, so therefore we know it's indeterminate. Right. So use a flat dot com. Okay, so first, free body diagram. No, I talk about force. There are three force. Yeah, three forces, internal force. That's three unknown. Three bar each has an in internal force. So you're not talking about deformation. No, not talking about deformation. Because when you count the deformation, that's more unknowns. But then you have more equations. Right? So when you judge uh, determinant or indeterminate, it's based on equation of equilibrium. And the only force show up there. That's why I only count how many unknown forces. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No. That means you have two unknowns, one equation. Why? Because you, how do you get this n1 equals n2, n3? You said sigma fx equals zero. Then n1 must equals n3. So you use the up one equation by looking at oh symmetric. Uh, why does this keep coming up? Yeah, click the bottom. Can the keep the. Okay, the bottom one? Yeah. All right, I couldn't say what. Yeah. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, in this case, okay, let's draw the free body diagram. Okay, what's a free body diagram? You can draw point A here. This is the point A, the knot where you tie. 
right? So you're going to have one cable pulling this way. So this is the N1. This is the one you're pulling to the top. And then this will be the N3. And the load is here. So that's your free body diagram. Now, for this free body diagram, how many equations you can write? Only two. There's no moment equation you can write for a point, particle, right? You could do. So, okay, now sigma fx equals, equals zero. What do you get? N1 project to here, horizontal level. Oh, that's a zero. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's bad. I forgot the <laughs> power line. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll do it. Uh, and then I can write on the board so I can make up the record later on. Don't worry about it. Okay, for you guys, it will be okay, right? All right, so N1 project to the horizontal direction. So N1 cosine this angle. So let's say this angle is alpha. This angle is alpha. It's known. All right? So you're going to have N1 sine alpha, then minus N3 sine alpha equals zero. So immediately you get what? N1 equals N3. So that's a sigma fx equals zero. Or you can say, oh, I look at the symmetric, so N1 equals N3. So you don't need this equation, right? So then the only equation is kind of makes sense will be sigma fy equals zero. That's the independent one. Okay, what do you get for that? So you're going to have N1 Project to the y direction, cosine alpha plus n2, then plus n3 cosine alpha. Or you can use the one you already saw. So you can say another n1 cosine alpha. Oh, I put the wrong number. OK. And then minus p equals 0. So you have this only one independent equation, two unknowns, n1 and n2. That's why it's indeterminate. Oh, OK, so I'll write down the board. Don't worry about it. I checked the battery was uh, 100%.